Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 11th Surrey Industry Tour and our first ever virtual tour. My name is Anita Huberman. I'm CEO of the Surrey Board of Trade. I'm speaking to you today from the ceded territory of the Tawasan First Nations and the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Kwantlen, Keitsi, and Semiamu First Nations. We also recognize that we live and work on the land of the Inuit and Métis. Ladies and gentlemen, Surrey is going to be the largest city in BC by 2030. Yes, the largest by population. And to put another fact in context, you can fit the cities of Vancouver, Richmond and Burnaby into the geographic area of Surrey. That's how large Surrey is. Surrey matters to BC and Canada's economy, especially when we have the most industrial land inventory in the Metro Vancouver region. Half of our population speaks another language other than English. 30% of our population is under the age of 19. A third of our land base is agricultural. Surrey has the most number of manufacturers in BC. We're a border city, we have an international docking facility, and the list of our assets continue. And today you are going to sample the strength of Surrey's economy. First, thank you to our sponsors for making this event possible. Our presenting sponsor is Envision Financial. Our supporting sponsors, TELUS Business and the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority. Before we set off, on our virtual tour, I want to introduce you to Dave Lamphere, President of Envision Financial. Good morning everyone and welcome to today's industry tour. I'm Dave Lanfear, President at Envision Financial. We're a division of First West Credit Union. Supporting the business community has always been at the heart of what Envision Financial is about, going all the way back to the original inception of our credit union where business owners first got together to create accessible savings and loan options for local businesses and farmers. We build strong relationships with our members so we can understand their business fully, including all of their needs and challenges. We really are more than a banker. We're advisors that help local businesses grow and succeed. We know that this last year has been incredibly challenging for our businesses, and we are so proud of the resilience business owners have shown. As a financial cooperative, we know the value of people coming together for a common goal. We've been able to serve BC residents for 70 years. Over that period, our healthy, sustainable growth has enabled us to better serve our business members and communities through things like larger product suite, enhanced support for our business and commercial members. Our brands have decades of history as locally known and trusted financial institutions that were built through entrepreneurial spirit, seeking to address unique or unmet financial needs in our communities. Today, as Envision Financial, we're still driven by this same solution-oriented, innovative mindset and we strive to simplify lives and help our members and communities thrive. This is why we exist. We live out this through our four principles that very much align with businesses. Success, succeed together, act local, create remarkable experiences, and lead with courage. We are not only committed to supporting businesses through our financial expertise, but we're also committed to helping the communities we serve thrive. We are so proud to serve businesses every day to ensure owners have the time and resources to focus on what's important to them, running their business. As a full service financial institution, we are able to support our members' commercial and business needs. Not only do we provide banking, borrowing, investing and wealth management services, but we also provide insurance, cash management services, leasing, payroll partners and merchant services. I invite you to take a moment to chat with any member of our team. I know we're all looking forward to meeting you and learning more about your unique business. On behalf of Envision Financial, I want to thank the Surrey Board of Trade team for having us. Enjoy today's industry tour. Thank you again to Envision Financial for your partnership and your commitment to making Surrey an Opportunity City. Now let's head to our first tour stop, Nana's Kitchen and Hot Sauce in Surrey, British Columbia. My name is Shalina Mawani, and I'm a president of the company Nana's Kitchen. We are manufacturers of samosas, and we've been in business for 21 years. Our product is sold into overweighty foods, save on foods, Sobeys, Safeways, 
IGAs, Loblos, and many other grocery chain stores all over North America. We are one of the largest manufacturers of samosas in British Columbia. We employ over 55 employees right now, and 95% of our employees are women. And it's a proud moment to say that we are a women-owned company and a power to all women. We are the only HACCP BRC certified plant producing over 25,000 handmade samosas. We are the only one doing handmade samosas in British Columbia. I'll show you a little bit about how the samosa process goes. It will be going to cooking. Once the product is cooked, it's cooled and brought for folding. And it's a triangular pastry that is filled with different products. Currently, we have quite a few flavors. And once the product is in folding, the way it goes is that the three sides are applied with a paste and it's filled with product and taken folded into a triangle. Our samosas are a little bit different from what's sold in the marketplace. That's why we call ourselves Taste the Difference. It's a proud moment that my business, Nana's Kitchen, is in Surrey because it feels like we are a small community. The support that we have received in Surrey from different um, you know, organizations is amazing. And I want to thank Surrey Board of Trade for giving us this opportunity to showcase our tool. If you would like to know more about Nana's Kitchen, our website is yournanaskitchen.com. You can email us and we'll be happy to get back to you. Incredible. And I can tell you from personal experience that the food from Nana's Kitchen is so delicious. On our way to our next stop, let me tell you a bit about the Newton area of Surrey. Number one, Newton accounts for over 25% of Surrey's total population. Number two, Newton has the most number of businesses in Surrey. Number three, Newton has Surrey's largest inventory of fully serviced industrial and mixed employment lands, making it home to a variety of industrial sectors, such as food and beverage manufacturing, metal manufacturing, and wood and furniture manufacturing. Number four, Surrey's highly diversified manufacturing sector delivers products for traditional and emerging industries, from custom cutting lumber for forestry companies to designing wind turbines for the clean energy sector. A high concentration of companies in Newton specialize in wood, furniture, computer, electrical machinery, and food production. Now let's see what's going on at Sunrise Kitchens in Newton. This is a family-run business that just expanded their manufacturing facility. They're in Surrey and continue to do business in Surrey because for them, the city is right for their workforce. My name is Gary Marisigan. I'm the Director of Operations here at Sunrise Kitchens. Sunrise Kitchens is a family-owned business and in operation for over 38 years. We're situated in the Newton area of Surrey. In fact, we have over 100 employees and 80% of those employees uh, live right here in, in the Surrey area. As for our business, uh, we are a one-stop solutions provider for all things cabinets, uh, from design to sourcing innovative materials, to engineering, to production, delivery, and even installation of the cabinets on the construction sites. We do it all. And the company has uh, grown significantly over the last 10 years, and we've definitely experienced more intense growth in the last three to four years. The Bogo family has consistently invested in the growth of our company, and uh, one of the most visible aspects of the investment is in our recent expansion. We've added a multi-floor, 35,000 square foot wing to our facility, which has brought us uh, up to about 80,000 square feet total of office and manufacturing space. In fact, when, when we were planning all of this uh, expansion, 
about the same time we realized that there was a, a huge demand for painted and stained products. And so part of the planning we decided we'll dedicate a whole production floor just for that, uh, painting, staining, and um, we've built that in uh, to the expansion. Of course with the added space there's also uh, heavy investment in new machinery, automation and technology. Over 90% of our equipment is computer controlled and networked. Uh, some of the newer machines even have built-in robots that do much of the material handling for us. So instead of our operators uh, lifting and placing and moving the material manually, uh, we have the robots doing that for us. So new machines, technology and processes along with the added space uh, it's contributing to about an increase of 50% in our capacity. So with that, we've been breaking our past productivity records. Uh, within a really short period of time, we went from producing 85 kitchens to 125 kitchens per week. Now, going that fast, we realized that you, we would need a fairly good and accurate way of tracking uh, our production flow. And one of the technologies we invested in is an integrated tracking system. Uh, all of these parts get a barcode label applied to them. And these parts are scanned at the various stages in production uh, throughout the factory, uh, giving us visibility on our computers exactly where the parts are and how many have been assembled. And they'll even tell us how many have been loaded into our trucks. The system even has this added feature that gives us 3D renderings of the parts and cabinets. So it gives our operators uh, a reference point, a visual reference point, to be able to do almost like an extra layer of QC uh, just to make sure that the parts and the cabinets are being assembled correctly. In the future, we plan to extend this technology uh, out to the construction site so we can actually scan each cabinet as they get delivered and then the data will just get uploaded into the cloud and then back here at the office we just download that data into uh, from the cloud and into our systems. That pretty much wraps up uh, our, our virtual tour. Sunrise Kitchens is proud to be an active member of the Surrey Board of Trade and again we are so grateful for the opportunity to showcase who we are and, and what we do and again uh, we would welcome anyone who would uh, want to come out and visit us for a personal tour. That would be great. Thank you again. Next, we're going to Apollo Custom Manufacturing. Apollo Manufacturing has been exceeding expectations for years. I'm so impressed with their mobile vending solutions for chefs, restaurants, film catering, golf courses, ski resorts, universities, corporate franchises, sport teams, and more. We're proud to have this business in Surrey. Frankly, I thought the food truck phenomenon was just a trend, but it's obviously not a trend anymore. For uh, White Spot, Carl's Jr., Tim Hortons, we've put pizza ovens into trucks. 7-Eleven build, that's a slushy truck. Mac and cheese, a couple of fire trucks. It's pretty wild what some of the people come up with. Great ideas. My name's Norm Kerfoot, and I am the owner of Apollo Custom Manufacturing. We started up uh, back in 2000 and we were involved in a lot of different types of steel fabrication, custom stainless, custom aluminum. We did everything. I mean, we built bike racks, we built gym equipment, uh, we built neon sign boxes, anything and everything just to keep the lights on. There's not much that we haven't built over the years. My name is Rob Mallory. I'm officially known as a sales and marketing manager, but I wear many hats. HR, office administration, and uh, washroom cleaner on occasions. <laughs> My longtime friend Norm Kerfoot 
gave me a call and said, listen, you know, we need somebody that has some sales experience, some corporate experience. Uh, we're, we're expanding, we're growing, would you want to give it a try? And I did. My name is James. I open up the shop in the morning and I usually close it in the evening. And uh, I set all the guys up through communication with Norm of what their duties are during the day. Probably what I enjoy most is the different variety of food trucks and carts that we do build and outdoor kitchens. So it's pretty, it keeps your mind working. Uh, Apollo uh, has built a reputation of being able to build uh, a certifiable commercial kitchen into almost any vehicle that's brought in. And as a result, we've had some pretty unique vehicles that have been brought to us. did a double-decker bus and that one was very unique and, and quite a challenge. Um, as that build went on, it, the build got bigger and bigger and we ended up doing more and more to it. So that was pretty unique. This is my son, Philip. When it started to come together, it looked pretty cool. The raising roof, it was pretty awesome. When we had to chop the roof off and make it go up and down on air cylinders, it had its, a lot of challenges, but I think it turned out pretty good. And you go upstairs and there's a, an air assist lifted roof. We cut the roof off and put rams in all four corners to lift the roof up to make it airy and then put in uh, dining tables and, and benches to sit up there. Every job we do is a little bit different than the other one, or it's a lot different than the other one. So we're, we're always thinking, we're always evolving, uh, we're always trying to come up with a better product. The guys kind of look at it as a, you know, a bit of a work of art with some of the jobs that actually go out the door. And, and, and that's, they're very proud of what they do and you get an old beat up truck that comes in here and when it leaves here, and this looks like a million bucks, right? We're lucky we have a young group of guys that, that are eager to work and eager to put out a good product. I've met a lot of really nice people, a lot of nice interesting people. We honestly believe that we've provided them the best tool for their business, their mobile business. And you know we hope the quality and uh, care that we've taken with that vehicle has stood the test of time and has proven them a valuable tool in their business. Basically, you built somebody's dream, and when they're overjoyed with the final product, I mean, that, it, it, it feels fantastic. It really does, because you're helping them launch themselves into a, into a new business, and uh, it's, it's great being part of that. Before we move on, let's welcome Jeff Clark, Director of Sales for TELUS Business. Thank you, Anita. I'm very honored to be here speaking with you today. TELUS is a company that believes in the spirit of entrepreneurship, which is why we have been a proud supporter of Surrey Board of Trade for the past four years. We are committed to standing with small business owners, especially during these challenging times. This is why we are excited to partner with Surrey Board of Trade and to support their incredible work in educating, building, and celebrating our vibrant entrepreneur community in Surrey. At TELUS, we are a proud supporter of Canadian business and we champion the owners, leaders, and teams that drive them forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. While we travel to our next stop, let me tell you a bit about the Bridgeview area of Surrey. The Bridgeview and South Westminster area is a neighborhood in the Wally Town Center of Surrey, British Columbia, right here in our great nation of Canada, that stretches south from the Fraser River to King George Boulevard. The South Fraser Perimeter Road, as part of our Gateway Program, 
provides superior access to Asia Pacific. It's a central location in Metro Vancouver that facilitates efficient distribution to local markets. As part of Vancouver Fraser Port Authority, DP World Fraser Ports from Dubai is right here in Surrey, previously known as Fraser Surrey Docks. They are powering Surrey's economy, including indirect economic benefits that totals 4,000 jobs, $220 million in wages, and $440 million in GDP. Bridgeview South Westminster's central location is supported by transportation infrastructure, as I mentioned, including Fraser Surrey Docks, intermodal rail, and a well-developed highway system. The area's commercial transportation network is tied together by strong trucking logistics, warehousing and distribution firms. The rapidly changing and developing area has attracted significant private sector investment, including West Group's multi-phase Pacific Link Business Park. Also, the Fraser River Waterfront District is where the city has acquired two parks along the waterfront with the intention of transforming the waterfront into a vibrant public space that will serve as a catalyst for development of commercial and residential use. Our next stop is Fraser Grain Terminal, a new export facility in Surrey. Exports of Canadian grains and specialty crops to growing markets in China and Southeast Asia continue to increase. The new export facility addresses two major constraints limited Western Canada rail capacity and a shortage of port industrial land for grain handling. Once complete, Fraser Grain Terminal will provide 4 million tons of terminal capacity per year. The new terminal has modern storage facilities, three state-of-the-art ship loaders equipped with dust-reducing technology, and a fully enclosed above-ground conveying system with built-in dust suppression. The design will improve regional efficiency and safety and help reduce dust and noise in the local community. The terminal extends existing rail loading areas and enables high-speed rail car unloading to improve loading efficiency, reduce rail shunting and dramatically improve rail car cycle times between the prairies and Metro Vancouver. Let's see what's happening at Fraser Grain Terminal.
This facility has been years in the making and will be an asset to Surrey when it is fully operational later this year. Fraser Grain Terminal is adjacent to DP World, formerly known as Fraser Surrey Docks. We're headed there next to catch up with Peter Exotta, Vice President of Planning and Operations for the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority. Hello, my name is Peter Exotta and I'm Vice President of Planning and Operations at the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority. It's a pleasure to be here today on behalf of the Port Authority as supporting sponsor of this year's virtual Surrey industry tour. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Tawasan, Semiamu, Keitsi and Kwantlen peoples on whose ancestral lands I'm speaking from today and to extend my thanks to them. As the federal agency responsible for the stewardship of lands and waters that make up the Port of Vancouver, our role is to ensure goods are moved safely, efficiently and sustainably which contributes greatly to a prosperous economy and healthy communities. The Port of Vancouver is Canada's largest port, supporting 115,000 supply chain jobs across the country and connecting Canadian consumers and businesses to more than 170 economies around the world. Our operations border 16 lower mainland communities and intersect the traditional territories and treaty lands of several Coast Salish First Nations. Here in Surrey, the port is home to two major marine cargo terminals, three Class 1 railways, and a full range of facilities and services for the international and domestic shipping community. Fraser Grain Terminal Limited is a grain export facility on the Fraser River. The facility handles bulk and containerized grain products including wheat, barley, oil seeds, pulses, and other special crops. Behind me is DP World Fraser Surrey, the largest multi-purpose marine terminal on the west coast of North America, Located on the Fraser River, DP World handles containers, bulk and break bulk commodities such as general cargo, logs, steel, machinery and project cargo. Port activities in Surrey support 5,600 jobs annually while delivering 350 million in wages and 1.3 billion in economic activity. The hard work and dedication of our partners in the supply chain including longshore labour, terminals, trucks, railway, and many others have kept Canada's trade moving, supplying products to people and businesses across the country at a critical time while also maintaining strong Canadian exports to markets around the world. Last year we saw trade through the Port of Vancouver grow overall by 2%. Container A's trade set a new record in 2020 providing consumer goods to businesses and people across the country while also providing capacity for food, agriculture, forest products and many other Canadian exports. It was also a record year for grain exports with a staggering 24% increase. So as you can see, both Fraser Grain Terminal and DP World Fraser Surrey play an integral role in enabling Canada's trade objectives. We are proud to be part of the Surrey community. On behalf of the Port of Vancouver, thank you. Thank you, Peter, for your support and leadership in making Surrey an opportunity city. We're headed now to visit a longtime Surrey business. While we make our way there, I want to tell you a little bit about the Port Kells area of Surrey. This is an industrial area that offers opportunities to locate in a mature industrial market located in northeast Surrey on the south side of the Fraser River, north of Highway 1 and east of Highway 15. The industrial lands in Port Kells are in high demand due to the area's strategic location within Metro Vancouver and also because of access to key transportation corridors. This established area was developed by resource-based companies located along the Fraser River. Today, Port Kells is home to a diverse range of industries with a high concentration of manufacturing, construction and wholesale distribution companies. This area offers opportunities for smaller scale development and redevelopment to higher intensity uses. And now let's take a look inside the Teal Jones Group. My name is Jack Gardner. Uh, I'm a log broker here at Teal Jones Group. Now, Teal was started back in 1946 by my great grandfather, Jack Jones. And over the last 75 years, we've grown from a one man shingle machine to over 2,000 employees in North America. 
of which 1,000 are employed here in BC and 500 on this main site in Surrey. Many of our employees are actually second and third generation employees. You know, their mom or dad started with the company and now they're with us. At our main site in Surrey, we have over seven different operations. We'll kind of focus on the three main ones today, the shingle mill, our uh, large log mill and our small log mill. The shingle mill is kind of the backbone of the company. We produce red and yellow cedar shakes and shingles, which are shipped all over the world. Stag is our large log mill, so we take a 15 inch plus top, and that's kind of where we focus on the high quality value added timbers. The small log mill is where we kind of focus on the dimensional lumber, the boards. In the small log mill, logs are pulled out of the Fraser River via our Pico crane, and they're thrown onto the deck. They go through a debarker, and then a cutoff saw, what kind of merchandise is that log for the best kind of recovery and length in the mill. From there, the logs are put through our quad saw line and uh, made into lumber. So on site here in Surrey, we're pr we produce over 450 million board feet a year between all the sawmills. We ship our products all over the world. We're in South America, Europe, Asia, even Australia. We're actually the world's largest producer of acoustic guitar tops. And that's all kind of blocked up off clear chunks of uh, cedar what's brought into the mill and uh, produced right here in Surrey on site. Teal Jones owns and operates different forest licenses across the province. Anything that we log gets taken out of the bush and we do not export any logs. We believe in keeping the jobs here in British Columbia. Teal Jones has decided to donate over half a million board feet of lumber to the town of Lytton to help rebuild. You know, this is our backyard. We've operated in there before. We log up there and um, these are our neighbors and we just really wanted to give back to the people of Lytton. We're investing over $60 million here in Surrey to help modernize our sawmill facilities and our capabilities on site. So if you're interested in finding out more about uh, Teal Jones, please visit our website, www.tealjones.com. Thank you to Teal Jones for your commitment to Surrey. Did you know that Surrey is a significant part of British Columbia's forestry industry ecosystem and supply chain system? Before we set off on our next virtual tour stop for our Surrey industry tour hosted by the Surrey Board of Trade, I'm so pleased to welcome back our representatives from our presenting sponsor, Envision Financial. President Dave Lampier and also Robert Diol, he's the commercial banking manager. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us uh, on this Surrey virtual tour, representing our diverse industry base in Surrey. And I know Envision Financial is an important part of instigating our economic recovery in Surrey and also ensuring that we have industry support. My first question is to you, Robert. As the commercial manager for Envision Financial, we all know being a business owner can be so stressful. How are owners going to know what the right bank account is for their business? Thank you for having us here, Anita. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, as we know that business owners nowadays are extremely busy nowadays in their own place of business and they want to really focus their energy on the place of business. And so banking should be the, sort of the last thing they really need to focus on. And one of the things we noticed in the banking industry is that online platforms have now completely changed the way uh, business owners do their online uh, banking. Um, and so investing in online is the biggest thing. We also, um, there are other products such as business uh, check deposits, which allow businesses to actually deposit checks directly from their place of business. Um, so there's been a lot of different innovative uh, products such as merchant, merchant services as well too that allow business owners to actually um, invest more time in the place of business instead of having to go out of the place of business to do their banking. So uh, Envision Financial provides a lot of these products uh, that we talked about and uh, it'd be a great opportunity for any business member to uh, reach out to us to discuss further. Robert, can you tell me a little bit more about the different accounts that you provide? What is it that businesses need to look at in terms of really enabling them for their competitive advantage? Yeah, you know, great question. And uh, I'm proud to say for the Vision Financial, we are one of the top leaders when it comes to business accounts. Uh, one of our major competitive accounts that we have is a $30 unlimited business checking account. Uh, it allows for um, uh, it allows for all transactions at any time, um, unlimited transactions, 
and for any pre-authorized debits or any pre-authorized credits, check deposits, checks written, um, and this flat fee for 30 bucks a month. So it allows business members not to think about their service fees in their accounts. Um, it allows them to know that flat fee of 30 bucks a month coming from the account. So that is one of our competitive uh, accounts that we have with Envision and it's uh, been a fantastic product for a lot of our business members. And Dave, as president of Envision, can you tell me a little bit about the services that you're providing for businesses? Uh, businesses need so much support, especially in these times. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. No, it's. Uh, I mean, we really bucket um, services into bank, borrow, insure, invest. And so when you're looking at banking, Rob talked about banking products, and it's important that uh, you, you, you're, you're focusing on your business, not the not the, the bank account issues that you might have. So it's really important to get the right account for yourself. When we look at loans, lines of credit, um, cash management, uh, term loans potentially for your business, these are all things that we offer. Uh, also insurance, it's really important, especially for business owners that, that they have the coverages to make sure that, uh, you know, in the event of something happening, um, their business is taken care of or their families or their employees and all of that. So that's uh, really important. And then investing too, it's important that there's you know the businesses have issues with capital dividend accounts and what do we do with that type of money and so we, we offer a full suite of investment products and advisors to, to help out so we cover all of the uh, really all the needs of any business owner and we're really proud of that so yeah. Robert as a lender what is it that Envision Financial looks for in terms of criteria to, for businesses to expand their business? Yeah, as a, as a lender, uh, I think the way it starts from Nita really is we, what we talk to the business owner, we, the first thing we look at is the ownership structure, who the owners are and who the management team of the business are. I think that starts with who the core of the business, that's where we start with the business, is who the core individuals are. Um, from there, we do start talking a little bit more about the business and what type of um, obstacles are happening in the industry and how we can manage, the, how manage their expectations and helping them grow their business move forward. Uh, either that through being through uh, acquisition, through capital investment, um, or even through uh, increase the cash flow ability through different products that we offer. So um, I think those are some items that we genuinely like to talk to all of our business members about uh, in our first discussions. Dave, one of the number one questions that we get is what is the difference between a credit union and a bank? What's your response to that? Oh, that's a great question and it's one that I'm actually really proud uh, to answer because uh, Credit Union and Envision Financial, we're owned by our members. So we are a financial cooperative, we don't have a shareholder um, that's not our members and so all of our, all of our uh, our, our decisions are based on what's best for our members, not best to a shareholder in Toronto or a pension fund. So um, all of the decisions for credit decisions, investment decisions, community um, support decisions are made right here in, in, the, in the lower mainland. We've just built a big new office out on Highway 1 and 200, and that's, we've invested in this community, and all of the decisions are made there, and they're made with the best intentions of the community. And so that's what I'm extremely proud of. There's no shareholder that, that we're beholden to. All of our profits go right back into the communities we serve. We don't give where we don't live, and um, we're extremely proud of that. So uh, that's a big differentiator um, from us and the banks, is everything we do goes right back into the cities like Surrey and Delta and Miami, and et cetera. We have a lot in common. The Surrey Board of Trade is also a member-based right. organization, and everything that we do is for our members, right. uh, conducive to their success, and also the greater business community yeah. in Surrey and the region. Uh, my final question to you is uh, to you, Rob. What trends are you seeing when you are looking at financing commercial properties? Yeah, it's definitely a hot topic uh, in today's marketplace. Um, we are seeing that Surrey is absolutely a red hot when it comes to uh, an investing in real estate in the Surrey community. Uh, I'm proud to say Envision, we are one of the, we invest many millions of dollars helping all of our business members invest in by acquiring commercial properties, either through being through egg uh, financing or through um, um, industrial properties or through just multifamily development. So um, we are seeing that it is becoming more prevalent obviously in the industry and um, there's also a huge growth opportunity in the next 20 years. We know that uh, communities continue to grow and uh, for us, as Dave had mentioned, uh, we want to invest in communities that we serve in and Division serves uh, the Surrey community. We have five branches of the community here and uh, we want to invest dollars in to see our community thrive forward. And so um, real estate is definitely one of the major parts that we play in in helping members grow forward. And Dave, if uh, our audience wants to know more information about all of your services, what's your website? 
uh, www.envisionfinancial.ca and um, yeah, or you can reach out to anybody on our team and uh, we'd be happy to help. There you have it everyone from Envision Financial, our presenting sponsor of our Surrey Industry Tour. Thank you so much, Dave Thanks, Anita. and Rob. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we're headed to the Cloverdale area of Surrey. Areas within the Cloverdale Town Centre like Clayton Heights have gone through significant growth to develop newer residential areas. To support area residents, new facilities and amenities are popping up regularly, including the highly anticipated Clayton Community Centre. Cloverdale is the third largest community in Surrey. The western border runs along 160th Street and connects with 48th Avenue, which is the southern border. To the east is Langley and to the north are Guilford and Fleetwood, separated by 84th Avenue and 76th Avenue respectively. Cloverdale has a thriving film and television industry as part of the Hollywood North economy. Cloverdale includes a campus of Kwantlen Polytechnic University called KPU Tech. It's the main campus for the Faculty of Trades and Technology at KPU. If you like classic cars, you're going to love this next stop at Jelly Bean Auto Crafters. The idea behind Jellybean Auto Crafters started 16 years ago, but in actual fact, it probably started about 40, 50 years ago. In many ways, it succeeded the dream. Either it was just going to be the two of us in a little shop doing, you know, one-off cars. Then we had this as a dream that had the big shop and multiple employees and all that kind of stuff. Well, we serve a wide spectrum of, of the market. Um, anything from concourse uh, to uh, race cars, uh, resto mods, uh, that kind of stuff. We've been to Pebble Beach with a car and you know, numerous other concourse shows. Looking around now at the level of cars we're building and uh, the uniqueness of it and the creativity we're allowed to exercise, yeah, I never thought it would go to this. This is way beyond what we expected or what we dreamt of even. Just the cars that are in the shop now are still amazing. They come to work every day and, and they blow my mind. It really isn't a category for what we do. Um, we were actually one show last year where they created a separate category for the Studebaker we built. And that kind of capsulizes what we do here. Each car is, is a one-off one car. It's like a bespoke built vehicle. If you go and get yourself a suit made, they would, it, the car is the same. And so our typical car now is, uh, um, is along those lines where you're taking an old Firebird or old Studebaker, or, um, the wheelies that's behind me, that kind of thing. Um, uh, any old car you like, and we'll put modern uh, running gear in there, modern disc brakes, and all the modern suspensions, that sort of thing. So the shop is divided basically into three areas. We've got our body and paint bay, we've got the mechanical bay, and we've got a fabrication bay. So the cars will go back and forth between the different bays numerous times during a build. Ewald will generally sit down and talk to a client for extended period of times probably at least once a month, once every six weeks, that they'll sit down for, you know, whatever, 15 minutes, half an hour, sometimes more, depending on the car, and make sure that we're all staying on the same page. One of the things that I do as part of my job, I do walkabouts in the shop at least twice a day. I stop in at every car, every employee, and we'll have anywhere from five minute to 10 or 15 minutes sometimes talk through where the car's at, what's going on with the car, um, any obstacles that have arisen. So it's a good way you know, to kind of monitor that, make sure that we're always doing what the customer wants on the car. The great thing about Jelly Bean here is, is that is, is some of these cars are very special, but the, 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 the staff and the people here get it to get the thinking. And, and that is a really, really cool thing about having your car restored here. They'll do what it takes to get it right, which is really unparalleled, you know, in, in the industry today. There's only a few people doing what these guys are doing. I think one of the best things about 
being around Jelly Bean was just their professionalism and the work they did, but also in how they communicated with us. So it was just real an open communication on the, the whole process. We spent a lot of effort making sure that we're doing something exactly like the client wants as far as you know their dream. I just think that we have a really unique eye, the way that we do things, attention to detail, proportion, fit, finish, flow. I come to work every day and I myself am blown away by the vehicles we have. And then in, uh, um, it challenges me every single day because some of these vehicles are extremely difficult to build. You're creating, designing, engineering. It gets extremely challenging some days. There are so many shiny things in this building that it's pretty rare for me not to walk in here in the morning and just start to smile. That we're able to turn out cars that function well, that look great, and will do exactly what they're supposed to do. To me, I think that, that drives me the most is that conquering those and looking at it later on and, uh, and realizing that's something that's really special, something that's unique and you know a one-off sort of a thing. It's a challenge, I think, that probably keeps me driving the most. Congratulations to Jelly Bean Auto Crafters. After 18 years in business in Surrey, they are in the process of doubling their shop from 7,000 square feet to 14,000 square feet and expanding the services they provide. Now let's pop over to KB Honey Family. KB Honey innovated during the pandemic as many of the businesses that you've seen today. Their growth during these times is impressive. My name is Chelsea and I'm the Director of Marketing for the KB Honey Family, home to Canada's oldest honey brands. We started our honey brand in 1884 with the Kid Brothers brand label and then quickly expanded in 1932 with Queen Bee. Later in the early 2000s, Western Sage was born, our fun family favorite line full of flavors the entire family can enjoy. We are located in beautiful Cloverdale, right near the Langley border. Come on by and see our warehouse anytime. We'd love to have you here. We are a small family honey business. We love all of our employees, just like family. Some of them have been with us for almost 30 years now. And we still to this day produce pure, raw, natural Canadian honey, just the way nature intended it free of any alterations or changes, just pure, raw, delicious honey. As many of you may know, we are known for our fun flavors like our cinnamon, our cappuccino, maple, ginger, and more. Those flavors are created using real, pure, natural extracts that are non-GMO and kosher certified, just like our pure honey. A lot of work and love goes into every single jar of honey that we have. First, we'll get our honey delivered to us straight from our beekeepers in large steel drums. These drums each hold approximately 700 pounds of honey straight from the hive. Next, our honey is then worked into the production line. First, we slightly, very slightly, heat the honey up just to be able to extract it from the barrels and move it into the pipes to work for our production line. The honey is then added for flavor that we need. That is then mixed into the honey in the vat and the honey comes down and into our main vat on the line. The honey comes out of that and into the jars, goes along the production line where it is capped and sealed. Then it continues on the production line, gets the date put on. The label, the seal and the date are all checked to make sure we're maintaining our quality standards we are known for. It is then packaged into a box and it's ready to ship to a store for consumers. We are proud to say that here at KB Honey, we not only supply honey here, of course, in British Columbia, but all across Canada and across the world. We are now an internationally recognized global business. We're doing business all overseas, including in China, Korea, Taiwan, Dubai, Indonesia, and more. The sky is the limit, and we're hoping that one day, everyone in the world can taste how good Canadian honey is. My number one personal favorite thing about working in Surrey is the community. There is such a gigantic warmth that comes from this community and working within it. 
The support is amazing, especially with these hard past couple years. It has been overwhelming, the support and love and kindness that we've experienced from the Surrey community. Truly, without them and the rest of BC, we wouldn't be here. We are so grateful to have our business fully established here within BC and in the city of Surrey as well. So thank you to the city of Surrey and all British Columbians for your support of our great and small little family business. We knew people weren't going out as much, so we really stepped up the game with all of our social media to help get the word out about our products and let people know what we were doing here and how we were providing pure raw honey to the masses. If you're interested in finding out more about our fun family business, interested in joining the team, or looking to purchase some honey, visit our website, kbhoneyfamily.com, or you can check out any one of our socials at KB Honey Family on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Come and stop by and let us know which one is your sweet treat. For our last stop, we're headed to Campbell Heights to see Garavanta Lift Canada. My name is Vince Chiamana and I'm the proud president of the Garavanta Lift Group. We employ just over 500 employees worldwide and 200 of the 500 are here in Surrey. Garaventa Lift is part of Severia, a Canadian public company that is traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Our store in British Columbia began in 1974 when we built the Grouse Mountain Skyride. We have been designing and manufacturing home elevators, stair lifts and lifts for people in wheelchairs at our Surrey factory ever since. It all started with two Swiss guys that fell in love with British Columbia and did not want to go back home. While we no longer built uh, ski lifts and aerial tramways, we've become a leader in our industry of home elevators and wheelchair lifts. Garaventa Lift has the largest fleet of certified and factory trained home elevator and wheelchair lift technicians here in BC ensuring that from sale to install, you'll be dealing with the industry experts. We manufacture, we install, and we also service your lifts. We are located in the industrial park of Campbell Heights, here in beautiful Surrey, BC. We employ just over 200 British Columbians out of this factory, and we have close to 30 employees at our direct sales office and showroom in Maple Ridge, which is only 30 minutes away from our factory. We purpose-built this building in 2016 to allow us to expand from our original buildings that were built back in the 70s in central Surrey. Before moving to our new location, we evaluated to move our factory to the US in order to be closer to our customers. However, we decided to stay in Surrey, scale up production, add more staff, and continue to invest in our company and in turn, our local community. Today we ship approximately 15 elevators and lifts each day and it goes worldwide from here. The building here is separated into two main areas. We have the office and the factory. The factory is where we physically manufacture your elevators and lifts. So our home elevators, our compact commercial elevators, our incline and our vertical wheelchair lifts, as well as our seat lifts. The factory is separated by work centers where we have a fully operational machine shop with lasers and brake presses, lathes, automated power coding uh, line, and the different testing and assembly areas. We also have over 5,000 active parts to keep the lifts properly maintained and aging well. Our lifts are shipped worldwide with the largest customer being located in the US. We also supply sub-assemblies from here to our Italian factory weekly, who in turn, they assemble our lifts for the European market. We have been part of the Surrey community since the 70s. And the best thing of doing business here is the openness to the different cultures and ethnicities. As a global company, we benefit from this multicultural employee base. Such incredible stories that we've been able to get an inside look at today. 
Campbell Heights, ladies and gentlemen, is large employment land in southeast Surrey along the border with Langley. Campbell Heights provides employment opportunities for the growing workforce that we have through the designation of business parks and industrial uses. To tell us more about what is going on in Campbell Heights right here in Surrey, British Columbia and what's to come for this area, I'm pleased to welcome Grant Bassrin, Associate Commercial from Lee and Associates. Welcome to the Surrey Board of Trade Industry Tour. This presentation will highlight the industrial market in Campbell Heights. Lean Associates are pleased to present an overview of the industrial market in Campbell Heights Business Park, located in South Surrey. We have assembled our local industrial experts, Sebastian Espinoza and Grant Bazran, to provide a concise overview of Campbell Heights, and we would like to thank Anita Haberman and the Board of Trade for the opportunity to share our knowledge with their team and members. Campbell Heights is among one of Metro Vancouver's fastest growing industrial areas, covering a total of 1,900 acres. The City of Surrey expects significant job growth in the high-end business park. Projections estimate employment will increase by almost 300% to approximately 20,500 over the next 30 years. Campbell Heights is an, an ideal location for industrial businesses as it provides excellent proximity to major thoroughfares such as Highway 15, Highway 10, Trans Canada Highway, and is located just minutes from the U.S. border. Some of the more recent activity in Campbell Heights stems from the revised land, land use concept for Campbell Heights South. The approved Campbell Heights local area plan encompasses an area of about 1,971 acres of land. The South Campbell Heights local area plan, if approved, includes lands that are outside of the agricultural land reserve and south of the existing Campbell Heights business park. The City of Surrey is proposing approximately one-third of the land to remain as dedicated conservation and recreation while the balance being two-thirds will be zoned as mixed employment from its current rural designation. None of this land is in the agricultural land reserve. In July of 2021, Surrey City Council proposed to convert an additional 605 acres of agricultural land and rural land to light industrial. The figure to the right of the slide shows the areas of business employment highlighted in pink while maintaining the biodiversity preserve area displayed in dark green. Metro Vancouver has been experiencing record low industrial vacancy rates each quarter and are now sitting at 0.7% vacancy. The city of Surrey alone contains 39.4 million square feet of industrial space, of which only 0.2% is vacant as of quarter two in 2021. South Campbell Heights' proposed plan will assist in addressing the dwindling supply of industrial land in Metro Vancouver and will provide opportunities to support businesses seeking to expand their operations while also accommodating new industrial businesses to the area. As the stock of industrial land in Metro Vancouver is ever diminishing, Surrey, with its progressive approach, remains one of the few municipalities with available industrial land slated for future development. The zoning and land use within Campbell Heights consists primarily of IB1 and IB2 zoning. This zoning is diverse and allows for a broad range of uses including manufacturing, processing, assembling, fabricating, warehousing, and distribution uses, all while maintaining the aesthetic of a high-end business park theme. Campbell Heights is on pace to accommodate significant job growth, and you will see within the pie chart on the right that 84% of the employment type in Campbell Heights consists of industrial jobs, while commercial encompasses 15% and 1% comes from office jobs. Furthermore, Surrey with its vast rural landscape means that companies and employers benefit from a large labor, making Surrey an attractive place to reside and house operations. Here we'll cover one of the many largest 
key players within Campbell Heights. Cedar Coast is among one of the largest industrial developers in Metro Vancouver, with up to 2.5 million square feet of industrial space and 11 active industrial developments at the present time. Among these 11 active developments, eight of them are in Campbell Heights, as shown on the current slide. One of Cedar Coast's most recently completed projects contains 125,000 square feet of industrial space located on the corner of 35th Avenue and 194th Street, which you will see highlighted in red on the current slide. Two of Cedar Coast's projects are currently under construction, as shown in blue. These projects total 538,000 square feet of space, one of which being a 427,000 square foot project named the Coastal Heights Distribution Center along 190th Street with an expected delivery of spring of 2023. The remaining Cedar Coast projects are highlighted in green and are currently in development, with the earliest project being the Pacific Corporate Center having an expected completion of quarter three of 2023. The following slide displays the completed project called Cedar Coast South Surrey, located at 35th Avenue and 194th Street. This development is home to companies such as HME, a medical equipment supplier, Best Home Kitchen Cabinets, Fancure, which is a manufacturer, supplier, and distributor of household electronics, as well as Thirst First, a coffee wholesaler. Slide 7 encompasses two projects currently under construction. The Cedar Heights Business Center has an expected completion quarter one of 2022. This project contains seven light industrial strata units totaling up to 111,000 square feet. Pre-sales for this project began in December 2020 and the project has been completely pre-sold. Within this market, it is not uncommon for projects to be pre-sold or pre-leased prior to building completion. This is a direct result of dwindling industrial supply and ever-increasing demand for industrial product, which is, being, which is being driven by population growth, increase in need for e-commerce, among other drivers. The following slide contains Cedar Coast projects that are still in the development stages. The earliest completed project being the Pacific Corporate Center, totaling up to 458,000 square feet of space with an expected completion time of quarter three of 2023. We'll now cover a market overview of Campbell Heights. The first table displays all upcoming projects coming available within the next 12 months. Overall, there is a total of 1.17 million square feet of industrial space coming available in the next 12 months, of which 442,000 square feet has either been pre-leased or pre-sold. Furthermore, there is a total of 22,115 square feet of existing industrial space coming available in the next 12 months. The following slide contains upcoming projects with timing set plus 12 months out from the present time. There is a total of 2,007,950 square feet of industrial projects expected within the next 12 plus months. Furthermore, BD, who is one of the largest industrial developers in Metro Vancouver, have an existing building located along 192nd Street with 99,000 square feet of industrial space coming available in quarter four of 2022. Overall, Campbell Heights has a grand total of 2.8 million square feet of industrial space coming available in the next 12 months, which are comprised of upcoming projects and existing buildings. Some of the notable projects in Campbell Heights consist of the 188th Industrial Centre, which only has 62,000 square feet remaining. Some of the tenants that have taken space at this location consist of NRI Distribution, who have leased approximately 100,000 square feet, and 18 Wheels, who have leased approximately another 100,000 square feet. 188th Industrial Centre is a project created by Sunlight and Bentel Green Oak and is being constructed by Wales McClellan. BD Group has a number of buildings within Campbell Heights, with their most recent being Parallel 32, totaling 192,000 square feet of industrial space on eight acres of land. This high quality development is projected to complete quarter four of 2022 and is certainly expected to be pre-leased prior to completion. 
Coastal Heights is among one of the largest new projects coming to Campbell Heights market. This development will bring 427,000 square feet of space to the market on 16 acres of land. With an expected delivery of spring 2023, this ideal distribution facility is guaranteed to meet the needs of many wholesale distribution and logistic businesses, among others. Slide 15 displays statistics in quarter two of 2021, specifically for the Campbell Heights area. As shown, there is a total inventory of 11 million square feet, which has increased by 72,000 square feet since quarter one of 2021. The lease rates reflect the existing demand in the market, and you can see the average asking rent in Campbell Heights sits at $13.91 per square foot. This has increased by $0.41 cents per square foot since quarter one of 2021. We'll now cover some of the key businesses that reside within Campbell Heights. Campbell Heights is home to some of the largest businesses in the country, as well as some of the largest businesses on the globe. To name a few, there's Flynn Canada, Sleep Country Canada, and Sobeys. Sobeys itself are occupying 530,000 square feet of space along 22nd Avenue. Furthermore, there is Walmart's distribution center, which totals 296,000 square feet along 24th Avenue, and also Loblaws, located on the corner of 28th Avenue and 188th Street. Starline Windows also calls Campbell Heights home, in addition to Save On Foods, who have opened up a 122,000 square foot warehouse just last year in 2020. And last, but certainly not least, is Amazon's warehouse on the northwest corner of 28th Avenue and 190th Street. We at Lee & Associates are pleased to have been able to provide an overview of the industrial market in Campbell Heights. If you ever have any questions about the market, feel free to reach out. Here's our contact information along with details about our brokerage. These tours are a brand building exercise for Surrey. We're so proud of what's in Surrey and the potential to grow business and industry in Surrey. Our friends from the consulate offices through our Surrey International Trade Centre that are watching today spread the message, please spread the message to your country that Surrey is open for business. Again, I thank our sponsors, our presenting sponsor, Envision Financial, our supporting sponsors, TELUS Business, and the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority. Again, thank you. If you have questions about doing business in Surrey, please get in touch with the Surrey Board of Trade. Be part of Surrey's economic strength and growth as we become the largest city in British Columbia. Visit our website, businessinsurrey.com, for more information on how we can help you. Thank you for joining us today. Make it a great business day.